Well, let us describe the properties of the obtained metric. So the metric that we have obtained has the following form, where r is implicit function of u and v, to remind you, uh, d u d v is equal to uh, minus r squared d omega squared. And I remind you that u and v are related to original Schwarzschild coordinates as follows, 2rg uh, minus 2rg exponent of minus t minus r divided by 2rg times r divided by rg minus 1, 1 half, and v is equal to 2rg uh, exponent of t plus r divided by 2rg multiplied by r divided by rg minus 1, 1 half. So, and uh, now we're going to draw and describe this space-time. Before doing that, uh, let me remind that if we multiply u by v, we obtain that r divided by rg minus 1 uh, exponent of r divided by rg is minus uv divided by 2rg squared. And we, if we divide v by u, v divided by u is exponent of t divided by rg. So no one can see that for constant r we have hyperbolas. For constant t, we have straight lines, which are passing through the origin. So straight, this is a constant, so we get the straight line. And uh, the, the hyperbolas degenerate to the, if when r goes to rg, the hyperbolas degenerate to the lines defi defined by this equation. So to the lines, u equals to 0, v equals to 0. So we want to draw the lines. But to do that, let me stress that u and v are light-like coordinates. So uh, the equation du equals to 0 and dv equals to 0 defines light rays for uh, light ray propagation for constant angles. So uh, it is convenient to define uh, this new t minus r and uh, v equals to t plus r coordinates. And uh, in this new coordinates, t and r, so let me draw them. Let me draw them. Uh, so this is, this is t, this is r. No one can see that the line v is this one. So this is line V, this is the line U, this is line U. And one can see that uh, constant R, constant R corresponds to hyperbolas. Constant R corresponds to hyperbolas, like this. So the situation is very similar to the one which we have encountered in, in Rindler space, as you remind, in the, as you re, uh, remember in the first lecture. So this is R constant. And constant T are straight lines passing through the origin. So this is T constant. T constant. So again, this line corresponds, as one can see from this formula. This corresponds to r equals to rg. This is u0, u0. And this also corresponds to r equals to rg. And simultaneously, this corresponds to t equals plus infinity, as can be seen from here. And this corresponds to t equals to minus infinity, also, as can be seen from here. So this is u equals to 0, this line. And this is v equals to 0 this line. And uh, 
Schwarzschild coordinates cover only this quadrant, while uh, this U and V are similar to Minkowski coordinates covering the whole space. So Schwarzschild coordinates, original T and R coordinates, are similar to Rindlerian coordinates, rho and tau. Remember that we have encountered in, in the first lecture. But what is important here, that using these coordinates, one can continue to R less than Rg, perhaps using, well, anyway, one can continue beyond this point. But this metric is singular, as we discussed during this, during this lecture, along the hyperbola, which corresponds to R equals to zero. This hyperbola has two images here and here. So this is kruskal zekerish coordinates and their properties. And we are now ready to draw Penrose-Carter diagram for this case. So we have obtained uh, kruskal zekerish coordinates which is T big, well, it's more appropriate to use X letter than R here because X is ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity where I assume that R is ranging from zero to infinity. So X, so, and this is uh, then, this is an V coordinate. This is an U, light like U coordinate. And uh, this kruskal zekerish space-time is not valid beyond this point. So it's not valid here. So this is r equals to 0, this hyperbola. So it's not valid beyond this point. So the situation is more or less up to this. The situation is more or less similar to Rindler, the relation between Rindler and the flat space-time. We can transform from u, which is t minus x, and v, which is t plus x, to, to the, which we can do the same transformation, basically, uh, as we did uh, for Minkowski space to the new coordinates psi and psi, from, from this two coordinates to this, the same transformation. Because as you may notice, so we just uh, we are concerned about this part only, the relevant, relevant two-dimensional part of this metric. The relevant part is just, the relevant two-dimensional part is just this guy, Rg dv du. So we concentrate on this and make in this space, non-compact space, this here, uh, make in this space the same transformation as before. So then the diagram, Penrose-Carter diagram in this case, is basically the same square as before with one important difference. So what we have is that, so we basically should obtain the square the same square as before, here psi, psi, but with important difference because of this, we have to chop off here the upper and lower triangular part, chopping off this. So this is r equals to zero, r, equ r equals to zero where, where it is mapped. So, but it is important that uh, under the conformal map, under the standard conformal map, this curves would map to something which is curvy here, but by adjusting conformal factor, one can make them straight. And now, so this is a Penrose-Carter diagram for the Schwarzschild spacetime. Let me discuss it in a greater detail. <laughs> 